as we uh, resolve some of our issues, make sure we're taking care of uh, ROV Atalanta and uh, yeah, enjoy this uh, beautiful view of a never empty ocean. The ocean is full of life and uh, even these kinds of views into the, into the depths I don't know, mesmerizing to me at least. And I think that also kind of speaks to another um, indigenous Native Hawaiian Kanako Iwi theme is that the ocean is never empty, nor is it ever bleak or just blue. Within the many, you know, the multitude of hues and blues that you can see from the ocean, from uh, various canoe boats, vessels, uh, the ocean is teeming with life from the tiniest organisms that some of our biologists on board could speak to. And then from, you know, the depths of the ocean where we see these very unique uh, species of coral and creatures. Um, Native Hawaiians and I'm sure other people around in every corner of the globe have never seen the ocean as something empty or that divides us or uh, disconnects us. I mean, it is a library, it's a source of knowledge. It is a place where we can go um, and worship. It's a place where we can be cleansed. And it's a place where we can come home to. And it's a place that we will go home to upon passing in this realm. Uh, leaving this place on Earth, we will go back to the ocean. And that is what Kanako Yivi deeply believe. So the ocean um, is never a place that is empty. It is never a place that um, it is exact. It is the exact opposite of that in many ways. And I think having the patience and being present, having this intimate relationship uh, with Kai and Moana and Aina, our ocean and our land, is something that should be... Uh, we should all strive to cultivate that relationship within our own lives as individuals. Oh, so well said, Mahina. Mahalo for bringing your perspective, your EK, into the depths with us. Such a pleasure to be learning with you and uh, the abundance of life down here, even the even the things we cannot see, or maybe especially the things we cannot see. We appreciate you all tuning in and, and standing by as, as uh, we ensure the safety of ROV Atalanta and, and uh, we'll hopefully be able to resume our explorations of IJN Kaga, one of the aircraft carriers, Japanese aircraft carriers that was sunk in the Battle of Midway. Yeah, I just want to Again, thank our incredible team, ROV pilots and engineers, our, our captain, uh, crew on the bridge, our navigator, um, the whole team doing a remarkable job. These kinds of dives are always challenging in so many ways, so many dimensions, and uh, those challenges are almost always met, always, in my observation, met with incredible calm, incredible skill, Tremendous talent and cooperation.
Yeah. Sorry.
Mahalo, thank you again for all of our viewers online joining us. Um, live on this fifth dive of the Ala Al Moana Kaiuli Expedition NA-154, board exploration vessel Nautilus. Uh, this incredible collaborative expedition focused on marine archaeology and geology and the biology of benthic communities on some of these incredible and ancient volcanic seamounts. Uh, we are just uh, troubleshooting. Uh, our ROV pilots and navigators taking uh, great care of our ROVs. We're currently diving on IJN Kaga. And uh, yeah, we're glad you're here. Uh, going a little quiet as we, uh, as we let the rest of the team uh, do their thing. So we'll be back with you shortly. Yeah, so we decided we're basically, so in all that, we've drifted up to, at it, like, I don't know if amidships, but we've made it pretty far past this time, so we're going to try and backtrack. Um, we're going to make a big jump back, and we'll basically see what happens from there. Okay. And I think the idea yeah. is to get a little bit higher up now and try and... What's that? 
Yeah, yeah, we're up okay. off the wreck, but yeah, we'll 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 see what happens. We'll reassess. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Reassessing, and we will try to reacquire target soon, uh, depending on what uh, reassessment tells us. Just coming back on from the back row in the control van to say thank you to our viewers and to our exceptional front row team. Uh, we're still live on SPL, just uh, just giving some space for this reassessment and maneuvering by the ROV team and navigators and bridge to make sure Atlanta is able to continue this this dive and exploration. This marks our third shipwreck. Um, all three of the main, of the carriers, uh, the main carriers that were, three of, not all, but three of the main carriers that were sunk at the, the Battle of Midway. USS Yorktown, IJN Akagi, and IJN Kaga. A lot of interest from our online viewers and uh, any plans or, or expectations of uh, diving on, finding and diving on other wrecks in the area. But, uh, we're focused on safely conducting each mission at hand. commenting earlier, it's not really exploration if everything goes exactly to plan, so it's an important part. Remaining calm, taking care of ourselves, taking care of our technology as we explore the deep sea. So thank you for staying tuned in, following along.
Thank you to all our viewers for standing by while we reposition the ship and ROV Atalanta in the hopes that we can reacquire IJN Kaga and continue the continue the survey. We'll be uh, we'll be sure to give you any updates as we have them, but uh, hope to be moving back towards the towards the wreck here so shortly. So for orientation's sake, we the last call uh, we made was an 85 meter jump to get us back to the stern. We're about 25 or 30 meters of the way there. All right, thanks for that. Yep. That was our awesome navigator, Catalina, working closely with the bridge and, and with our ROV pilots. So bringing us back on target and up to speed. Thanks, Catalina. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Zach. And I don't think the bridge can hear me, but thank you, bridge. Exceptional piloting and navigating there, making sure, noticing that Atalanta wasn't uh, wasn't really responding and behaving as we would expect, and out of an abundance of caution, uh, 
stepping back and making sure that we're protecting the vehicle. We we need Atalanta uh, for the remainder of the expedition's critical function as a tow sled when we're diving the sea mounts and and um, protecting the cable as well. So well done, Robert. Thank you for uh, keeping us all safe and uh, keeping the ROV ROV safe as well. I don't know if now is a good time, but uh, Robert, if or Zach or Catalina, if, if uh, any of you want to catch us up to speed on sort of what you were noticing or what was happening that that made us want to shift our shift what we were doing, um, I'm sure a number of our viewers would be interested. So, I'll, I'll try to explain it. Robert can correct me, but um, basically, as we came around the stern of the ship, we were trying to um, get closer to it. But on that kind of slow swing around the stern, we made a series of moves in total of like about 55 meters trying to just get straight at the boat, directly at the boat. And I mean, we were only about 20, 25 meters from it, and those moves in total didn't really take us anywhere. And also, Robert noticed that um, when he was trying to change the heading of Atalanta, he would move it one way and then it would very quickly respond and kind of swing sporadically around. So that's what concerned him uh, of possible entanglement. So that combination um, is kind of what led to the decision to just back us up to where we started. So much data that the technology doesn't do all the work itself. Um, Catalina and Robert tuning in to the signals and paying attention to uh, what they would expect to, to be seeing the vehicle doing and, and uh, looking at all the different inputs from sonar and from our video screen and from ROV behavior and response. So, yeah, remarkable job, you all. Thank you. Thank you and thank you, Catalina, for that explanation. Yeah. We are moving back towards IJN Kaga. This is the third air, sunken aircraft carrier. Um, of this expedition, third and final. Um, and uh, it's been a privilege and an honor to be part of the team exploring these wrecks, um, remembering this history, honoring the legacy of those that were lost, and also the, the legacy of peace that ensued after this, after this battle and this war was fought. And, um, Yeah, that's about how much we've moved. Yeah. Catalina is our is our sonar back set at uh, at twenty meter intervals. Those rings again? Or? It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we're just, we're not picking up anything right now because uh, we were a bit off the wreck. So. Yeah, pretty, we, we had to come up a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, currently our depth is around 5,400 and we need to drop down uh, another, what, 10, 20 meters to pick up that echo again. Yeah, 25-ish. Yeah. 25-ish, thank you. Kukui, how you doing over there? Were you getting nervous? <laughs> you getting nervous? A little bit. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you're A good. A little bit, but I know we have an amazing team, and they're doing an awesome job at what they do. <laughs> That's right. It uh, helps us all stay calm knowing uh, what capable hands we're in. Robert's seen a few things down there underwater, and uh, we can uh, always trust him to... Uh, to handle these ROVs with masterful care. 
Is that right, Robert, or were you were you pretty nervous? Were you panicking up there? I don't know. I wasn't really nervous, but <laughs> I, unfortunately, we experienced having uh, lines caught up in the either in the tether when we have the two vehicle system or on the main wire. Yeah. Yeah. I was one time on watch with uh, Robert uh, off of uh, Catalina Island in Southern California and uh, Herc got uh, caught up in a couple of fishing lines. Mm. Fortunately though, the weights on them had these little carabiners and Bob was able to reach up with the arm and <laughs> literally unclip it. Oh the my carabiner gosh. with the with their manipulator arm and I was just sitting here like, oh my God. And it worked, it was just, we got free like, he just did two of them as float, we floated free. It was just like I, amazing. I thought you were going to say Robert just uh, pulled out his old Sears air compressor and then just dove down there yeah. with the hose in his mouth, unclipped them himself. It was actually pretty shallow. He, we might have been able to. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, Robert, I, I, I know you're excited to be back on Alvin, Alvin next year. You were telling me a little bit about well, I that. Know, I don't know yet. Oh, come on. No, it depends on schedule. Oh, I, he's a, Robert's a busy man. He doesn't, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, I would like to. Reacquiring target. Awesome. Yeah, uh, viewers, you should be able to see the outline of the ship coming up in uh, satellite feed three on your lower left screen. So, uh, yeah, it looks like we're just hanging over the, um, near the stern on the starboard side, which is the next part that we want to explore so we're uh we're heading back down well situated yep i think and and we should in theory continue to kind of drift back a bit um it does yeah it so is we'll very have to flip around when we get down here a little bit yeah and the seabed is in view i think i see a part of the wreck as well there's a, there's <laughs> a hole there <laughs> All right, and we're back at it. Thank you, team. Quite impressive. Uh, I'm such a fan. Just feel like, wow, I just got front row, front row seats to, to like the NBA Finals or something. I'm six eight. I'm a basketball player. Sorry, but. Yeah, this is. Oh, Megan's popped up in a different chair. <laughs> you never know. I'm just she, like she lurking can, around. She can be anywhere. <laughs> Where, wherever you least expect it. Oh, no. <laughs> well, well we, we all have our own headsets now. Um, we used to share them, but obviously for, mm. for yeah, it's, mm. it's probably better that we do this. Um, but she, anything that's free, she can just go plug her headset in and chat with us. And I'm like, where's that voice coming from? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Could be in the lounge. Yeah, never that's know right. where she's going to be. Always Surprise, Megan. watching. Oh, Always man. watching because I'm a fan. fan. <laughs> We're top fans. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. It's uh, amazing to be part of the team. We're seeing a lot of debris falling away from yeah. the side of the vessel, I believe, onto the seabed here. And that is also something quite different from the IJN Akagi that we looked at, which had a fairly intact hull all the way around the debris field for the Akagi was a distance away. But here we see a different type of, of destruction. Well, and as I was saying on when we were on Yorktown, um, that the, the intact flight deck on Yorktown and other aircraft carriers, which we, we observed this on uh, USS Independence off San Francisco uh, when Nautilus dived it in 2016, um, the, those flight decks can kind of act a little bit like a parachute. And I don't mean to slow the descent so they touch down like a feather, but you know, it will kind of entrain some of the water and, and uh, affect how the ship moves as it sinks. Um, but Akag Akaga, oh my gosh, Akagi and Kaga, um, their flight decks were gone, and especially uh, Kaga, it, you know, it, it's completely gone. So they would have sunk, uh, I think, a lot faster and more directly to the seabed, um, which would just increase the amount that they smash into the, or bury themselves in the mud. And I think all of the structural elements, or many of them, would have been damaged by the explosions and fires. And if they were, you know, still attached to the wreck, sometimes tenuously on the way through the water column, they're going to break off upon impact. Yeah, a lot of force and a lot of mass involved there. I was thinking that about that forward flight deck that was in the pylons on the Akagi, that, that 
were on the sea floor right next to the yeah. bow, that they had been damaged, but were still somewhat connected until it hit the bottom. So I, I might be a little, my eyes might be to see, are, does it look like that's flattened? Like that's flat or are we just looking at a strange angle? I was thinking it was flat, flat yeah, too. Yeah, okay. It kind of does, yeah. All right. Shore side? Okay. Hans, this is shore side. Can you hear us? I can hear you, Jim. Go ahead. No. Sorry, we... We were in the midst of a discussion. Did you ask a question? Oh, no, no. I just thought I heard um, someone contacting us. Thank you, Jim. All good, thank you. If you're coming back to us or just tuning in, we are we are back on the IGN Kaga with uh, ROV Atalanta uh, after a brief step back uh, to ensure the safety of the ROV. Masterful job by the pilots and navigator. You guys are getting big love in the comments and the chat. Um, even especially for Zach. Yeah. <laughs> Rooting you on, cheering you on, Zach. <laughs> Go, Zach. Yeah. You're doing great. And uh, you are doing great. And it's uh, awesome to watch this team effort over over all five dives that we've done so far on the Ala Moana Kaiuli Expedition NA 154 on the Nautilus. These last three dives uh, being spectacularly special, absolute privilege um, and honor, humbling experience to be 5,000 meters deep, over three miles beneath the surface of the Battle of Midway. Um, so, so many lives were sacrificed. Um, as we mentioned earlier, to just celebrate and lift up that sacrifice and also the legacy of peace that has ensued since that battle over 80 years ago that we're so thankful for. Amazing to be treated to a collaboration from co with colleagues in Japan, colleagues in Silver Spring, Maryland. We're so thankful um, that we can be joined through this incredible power of telepresence um, by friends and colleagues from around the world. And we appreciate all of you listening on Nautilus Live. I encourage you, if you're watching on YouTube, come on over, share your thoughts and comments and questions with us on Nautilus Live as we continue to survey and explore the cargo. Catalina, we may be um, inboard, like, uh, uh, and that the, the deck edge is below us. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing that. So we're, I'm kind of waiting to see where it settles out, because it's not that, we haven't gone the full length of that move. Okay, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Yep. Understood. Oh, yeah, there's the edge of the deck. Right there to, we go. to the right. Yeah, correction, we're not looking at the seabed at all. Yeah. Nope. Sitting right above the center of the ship. This is so different from the Akagi, so flattened. It brings to mind, you know, wrecks that um, happen in channels where EOD teams go in and then use blasting materials to level wrecks to clear the channel, yeah. to clear the obstruction. So is this part of the collapsed hole that we're looking at here? So it seems like there's um, just a lot of the, the upper works of the... Uh, of the ship were, I think, blown off because it's not like we're not seeing a ton of it on the uh, like hanging hanging down or collapsed inward. It's just I think a lot of it was blown overboard at the time of detonation. Okay. And um, that debris field is going to be elsewhere because this ship was under its own power for a few hours after that and then uh, drifted even further before she was sunk. So mm -hmm. I think I think a lot of the the debris from the actual explosion and is, is going to be in a different place. And this is just kind of the, the lower hull that, that ended up sinking here. Understood. 
Yeah, and John thinks this might be um, boiler uptake openings we're looking at, which would normally, of course, be like deeper down in the ship and, and inside the ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, zooming in. That looks like a wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's two wheels, right? It's a gear, three, actually. Yeah. 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 One yeah. in the lower is it, right. Is that the, the prop? Because isn't this the stern? Right? This is the stern, yeah. So I think. Such a different experience from the Akagi and, and the Yorktown, sort of with the entire two or three upper decks mm -hmm. pretty much gone. Yeah, yeah, John postulates this could be a propeller shaft, like the inside part of it. Wow. We're, in the, cool. we're in about the right spot for that. I think I'm seeing a fair amount of uh, sediment that settled into uh, yeah. the wreckage as well. Certainly kind of the, the crater, the degree to which the ship is, is sunk in the mud, you can imagine the, how much suspended sediment would have would have come up and over. Yeah, that, that impact would have turfed up a lot of sediment, similar to what we saw with uh, Akagi yesterday. Yeah, so this might be the engine room, which um, John reminds would have been aft of the boiler rooms. So when the ship sank, um, is there any chance that this may have kited the same way we suspect some of the others would have? I think so. I mean, the bow, bows are designed to cut through water, so that probably would have been the uh, the movement that it would have gone. Also, this one sank by oh, this one sank by the stern, so um, it may not have as much. Um, the other ones that like Independence is sank by the stern, I think was leveled out because of the flight deck, uh, and then ended up plowing in bow first. But this one, if it sank stern first, may have. You know, we see that the stern is pretty buried, so it may have actually struck uh, stern first. Okay. thickness of the sediments in this part of the Pacific, somewhere we're estimating between, it's a fairly wide number, anywhere from about uh, 50 to maybe even over 300 meters of sediment in this region. Uh, uh, this means that um, the the impact would likely have uh, buried substantial portions of this hull in the oh, sediment. Wow. Yeah. But the sedimentation rate is very low, like yeah. one centimeter a thousand years, something like that. Uh, somewhere, somewhere on that order. Yeah, it's very, it's a little higher in the Atlantic, but in uh, yeah. this part of the Pacific, it's a little bit lower. And uh, since we're looking at crust that's probably somewhere in the range of 110 to 120 million years old, yeah. um, maybe slow sedimentation, but that does build up a lot over sure time. Does. Yeah. So I think that a, Robert, a lot. Of, back are, up. Okay. I can't hear you very well, Robert. Do you have the mic close? Huh? No, it's okay. okay. This is an exceptionally clear shot. Yeah. I think that's one of the um, the, the support uh, posts. The support posts for the, uh, the, the, flight flight, the flight deck. I can't okay. think for words today. I think we saw Sorry. that from the other side, coming down the port side. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I was going to, so we're looking again at the port side right here. Oh, really? Oh, I, that's, that's right. What I'm we're over the wreck. Yeah. We're over it, the wreck. Yeah. yeah, that is the port side again. Yep, you're right. Nautilus Shore. Yeah, go ahead. John, do you have, this is, I'm probably asking John as well. I mean, we know where we are at the stern right now, but if this is blasted all the way down, what we thought were uptakes, there was a pair of those side by side, more or less separated, that we looked down on. 
John, do you think that we were looking at the top of like Shaft Valley, potentially? Almost looks like a part of a turbine. Yeah, it's kind of what I'm thinking. I think that is the very end of the stern there. Okay. Uh, or at least what remains of it. I don't think it is the very end, but I think that's the end of what we have here. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking. Think that's coming in. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Like, I think we're coming into, we're right close to the tip of the stern. Yeah. And just, you know, John back in the chat, uh, this has, the, the damage is so extensive inside there. What I think we are looking at, and John saying, yeah, probably it's possible, that those, that framework that we saw, the thought was the boiler intake, sense is, I think that's the kind of support. Uh, that we've built around the shaft as you get right up past shaft alley and you're getting ready to go in through the hull. Uh, heavily reinforced. We passed, there was one on either beam. So my guess is, is that that's probably what we were looking at. And John's also noticed we, did, we had the same opening at the stern of Akagi. Yeah. This kind of dam also tells us that it's unlikely that we are going to see the name on the stern here as we did, of course, with Akagi yesterday. Yeah, I um and one more. Go ahead. Well, you know, Mike, just uh, drawing attention to the obvious here. I mean, this is the same unknown object uh, that we were scratching at uh, Akagi with this cylindrical, um, cylindrical stern-mounted object. Would love John's thoughts here. Uh, it had wire rope coiled inside on Akagi. It doesn't seem to be the case here, but I'm not sure what it's going to. It is interesting. We're seeing. Uh, I think that's wooden planking uh, on the that was on the deck surface. Yeah, it does look like it. But that the, the shaft alleys that we would be seeing would be the two innermost right along the keel there, uh, and the spacing is such that that makes sense. As I'm looking at the plans, and I think that we did. So that those mounts are definitely bracing for the Zoom propeller out. shaft as they go through the hull and, and connect to the two screws. The inner, are the you inner asking for a zoom in? Okay. Yeah, can we zoom on the planking? Like the Akagi, we're seeing Kaga fairly deeply buried in the sediment that uh, Dr. Valfenlayson was just telling us about. Uh, but so much of Akagi's upper decks were still visible and it faced much less battle damage. So we were able to see quite a bit more. Exactly, um, yeah. Thank you. The superstructure on this ship is, uh, it, it was much more yeah, heavily yeah. damaged. So it looks like it's sitting a lot more deeply buried in the sediment, but uh, it's, it's possible that actually a similar amount of burial. We also saw this um, with the USS Yorktown too, where a yeah. lot of its hull was buried. I think the uh, I think the part that would have had the name on the side is broken off though. Okay. Oh, because yeah. we don't see the transom there. Far gone. Yeah, it looks like some of the edges uh, here that we're seeing in the planking are, uh, some of them seem to be finished, but some of them also seem to be pretty uh, ragged. Yeah. Tip of the stern is definitely gone. Mike, just remember that we have the tip of the 
can go off on uh, Nevada as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the I think this may have hit stern first, if if it hadn't broken off at the surface. Um, it's interesting that uh, also on the Lexington that uh, petrol found in uh, I think seventeen or twenty seventeen or eighteen, uh, the bow and the stern were both broken off and and sitting nearby the wreck. I think I think uh, torpedoes may have hit hit those spots though. I don't, we don't actually know uh, where the two torpedoes from Hamikaze hit. Uh, this ship, so it's possible that that one struck the stern as well. Well, we knew, do know, I believe you were telling me earlier, Mike and Hans, five five aerial bombs uh, during the battle came across the deck of the Kaga, is that correct? Yeah. So just a tremendous damage to the flight deck, um, major explosions, uh, just uh, ultimately scuttled, but it had been really severely severely damaged in the battle. Yeah, I've seen reference to four and a reference to five. So, you know, again, it's 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 difficult to um, confirm some things in the heat of battle. Kathleen, how are we looking on uh, movements? So basically, I um, I kind of I called in a move to take us back up. Yep. Um, we hadn't quite completed that move down, so it could be a bit of like canceling the movement but i'm yeah. trying to keep us from swinging too far back off no we're in a good spot right now i mean i, I don't want to necessarily start a big move until we know how we've shaken out but sure, i think sure. i mean we're starting to get in a good spot for going up along the starboard side um so the next one could be like a, a longitudinal move mm -hmm. forward but slightly Just, off so yeah. that we get a little bit further away sure when we came down on the on the wreck last watch it was like we were at the right, five meters away was really the perfect lighting for the for the edge. So okay. we were able to see the features of it. Okay. Um, so if by some, uh, if currents and whatever else is going on allows, that that yeah. is kind of the sweet spot that we're looking for if, okay. if possible. For sure. Like this here, like we're, right when we got into that downswing, we ha had the right lighting to see, see features the right way. Yeah, okay. Um, and so w once we start moving up, we'll s probably see some of those other casemate guns on this side of the wreck and then uh, move forward. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Mike, to clarify, are we looking at kind of what would have been our sitting sort of right above what would have been the, the starboard the starboard edge of the stern of the, yep. of the vessel? Yep. Yeah, I think I don't think there's a lot broken off, but um, this certainly is open to the sea and, and we're missing the, the transom at the back. Yeah. Um, and that would have been the main propeller shaft there that, that we're looking down we're looking down into now. There were four propellers. Well, no, that's All not th this circular feature. We're not actually sure what that is. That's not a propeller yeah. shaft. The propellers are probably under in the well. The propellers are in the mud. Um, I don't know what this feature is. It was also on Akagi. Um, John says we're right over the steering gear area, um, but yeah. that that would be no. bel below this deck. Right. Yeah, right. And that's the conclusion here as well. Jeff thinking that I think it. I think the rest of us are all nodding. I mean, that whole tip of that stern is off. There's that whole other level down below into that steering gear compartment. And those, the two, the two, two out of the four shafts that are right alongside each other, along that line of the keel, are both close. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we're still kind of in the science chat. We're still kind of in discussion about what this circular feature might be. I wonder if it's in this, if it's shown here. You can't hear me. Thank mm -hmm. you. I got you. Yeah. Small Are biological observation. Um, we see an abundance of uh, anemones on the metal parts, but not on the uh, not on the wooden uh, deck. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. You can turn And that's common with what we saw on the other others as well. Hey, Juan, do you think this might be a base of a captain? That's why. That circular that's, feature, that's I don't see the, I the the gearing below the capstan. I don't think yeah. it's a capstan. No, uh, 
He's right. It's just he needs to latch down if he's talking. Yeah. And I think when he was calling for his zooms, I didn't hear. Yeah. All right, I'm just, I'm going to give it another I think minute. Potentially a capstan is if you had a shaft that went down into there. Uh, the only other thought is that somehow this provides access to those twin rudders, somehow some sort of uh, emergency steering up top as opposed to down below. But again, I mean, the engineers that knew this. No, I don't, I don't see a hole through it though. I don't see a hatch in there. I don't see a hatch either. What I'm wondering is if we're missing something because they're silt or if it's solid. Because this is the same feature we saw on Akagi. And Akagi had coiled wire rope inside. So I wonder, operationally, there's no wire rope apparent here. But no. Well, it could be an artifact of the cruiser hull as well. Okay, can we zoom just, in? Okay, zooming. Ah, so Russ Matthews just says if it was still a battle cruiser, he'd be wondering about the base of a crane or a plane catapult. All right. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, some of the plans, and I don't see anything like that on the stern. Yeah, I've seen a round uh, something that looked covered exactly this shape in some of the plans. It didn't have any crane. Uh, oh, or... it, it could be a capstan because it did have anchor chain in the back. And Ooh. there's something under the under there that I think it might be a capstan actually, the base uh, well, of one. Uh, I don't know, we were looking inside the interior beneath it and the capstan's mostly down below with the gearing and I didn't see anything like that. Yeah, there, there was that... an anchor and a hawse pipe, um, but yeah, maybe not. Yeah, because yeah, is that the deck that we're looking at? Yeah, it is. Okay, okay. I guess I'm still in the no. It's not a capstan camp. Uh, okay. So there's also this drum right here. Looks yeah, like rope. It has wire rope around it. Sorry if I can. Right. Right there. Yep. but I'm open to being convinced I'm wrong. You should uh, tune into the internet and all of our viewers online then, Hans. They've got the lots of ideas as to what this could be. <laughs> and I appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who's adding their we have folks who say they have photos of Kaga Stern. Could you call for a zoom out, Robert? From the 1930s. A lot of folks right. clearly do you want yeah, a zoom? Do okay. All right, copy. Clearly having some spent some time studying Kaga's history as well as the other ships. That's good. What what are the uh, there's one one comment from a viewer that says, I have a photo of Kaga's stern from the late nineteen thirties and there's a large capstan right in the center of her stern deck. And so that large circular feature is probably the base of a capstan. That's one that's one uh, vote for Capstan. That's one vote. Could have been two votes for <laughs> Well, okay, we, yeah, we have multiple votes for Capstan, but it's another vote for Capstan. <laughs> Four votes. I can see the way the winds are blowing on this one. <laughs> you I'd can see the way the anchors are dropping. Yeah, on this I'd have one. to say my familiarity with Capstan is going to extend to like 19th century. Um, hand-operated capstans on sailing vessels, <laughs> and they'd be completely different than something of this era. So, yeah, I'm open to being wrong on this one. That that cable, that coil of, uh, or winch or whatever, roll of uh, steel cable's interesting. Hey, do you think potentially that could go in the item of, of debate here, you know, perhaps we are within? Interesting. Um, 
Maybe. Uh, so, so above this was the deck that held the, uh, like the other boats, like the lifeboats and stuff. Um, so it could have been related to uh, launching that, those, them. So if, if we want to shoot up mm -hmm. along here, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get a bearing for that. It's going to be, because 335 is facing onto it right here. Yeah, I could line up. Yeah, that might help. Right angle to it. Okay. Okay. Our viewers online, Three. we're looking at the starboard stern of IGN Kaga. Well, that's kind of right angle to it. Okay, 270, so. What's 360 maybe to get us up that way? Oh. 360. Way too overshooty. Yeah. We want to go almost. Not. Sorry, go ahead. Alexis is just yeah, pointed out looking at the plan. Yeah. There may be okay. lettering below that fleet. Oh, wow. Uh, all right, hold on. Um, okay. Is it. Are we far enough back that we can lower ourselves to look at that at all? I need to come off it maybe another five meters or something. You haven't called in a move. Right? No, I haven't. I haven't. So maybe we just back off. You want to back off? Okay. Um. So. We could we could see how we do here. Come down a bit. Yeah. Be a little close. Four zero. It's just not oh, looking wait. like a captain. Yeah. No, there's the two white patches on the side of the hull. Oh, do right, we have right the... below the cleat. Oh, wow. Uh, probably a huragana again, correct? There are really wild gyrations here. If so, we'd, we'd want to go low to see those. Yeah. If it's, that's if that's we excellent. Yeah, so we are... Yeah. So we're right at the stern for sure, and we're farther back than we thought. Do you want me to try to take it back still? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah if, if you can, thank okay. you. Bridge now. Could we move five zero five meters at bearing zero four five? Bearing zero four five, yes. Thank you. Such a such a exciting and powerful, profound moment yesterday when we were on the Akagi and uh, the ship revealed its name to us in the same fashion, painted over in white paint, but possibly on Kaga showing through the white paint, similar to Akagi. Yeah, and with both of these, it wasn't something we were sure we were going to see. Right, especially on the Kaga with the, so much of the stern missing, having broken right. off, and and uh, but we're right here at that boundary where the, back, where the tip of the stern ripped off from the rest of the hull, but right behind where the characters might be.
Well, since we're still here, I'm, I'm sorry. It just doesn't look very capstan-y to me. So I might have to maintain my position just simply on general principles. Okay. And, uh, you know, a nice single dissenting vote is always good for... <laughs> just, just to read another vote for you, Hans, the space underneath this one is the chain lockers for her af after anchor. Tell me where to send the photos and the science team can see for themselves! <laughs> yeah. Exclamation point. Look, everyone is entitled to their wrong opinion. <laughs> everyone is. <laughs> we, uh, we love the enthusiasm. We love the knowledge that our viewers online, we love the curiosity that our viewers online bring uh, to the conversation. So uh, thank you. Continue sending in your questions and comments. Um, we're uh, slowly repositioning in the hopes of getting slightly better view of the side, the starboard okay. side of the stern that, that uh, might <laughs> reveal this ship to be Kaga. We have um, we have opinions in the science chat that it's a hot tub. <laughs> hot tub? Sim similar to the tepid tub that we have on that's our my, That's my favorite opinion so far. Mm -hmm. It'll be a little chilly down here. I actually have no sense of scale as to like how many people could fit in that if it's like one or ten. Yeah, it looks yeah. like maybe a two person. <laughs> maybe a two person. A one if they're a, a, a Dan Kinzer science <laughs> communication <laughs> fellow. You, you can't fit in there. <laughs> Do we know the size of that cleat? Yeah, it's hard to get a sense of scale on these. And I think what my brain is trying to do is make uh, a lot of what we're seeing smaller than it actually is. Yeah, mm. my mind wants this to be like, yeah, it looks like it's smaller. than It's probably actually huge. Probably. You can imagine that cleat, cleat would have been enormous, yeah. yeah. And we can, uh, I've seen cleats on similar size vessels before. And Yeah, yeah. we don't uh, have our handy dandy lasers today. Right. Trying to imagine wrapping my arms around the cleat. <laughs> for, for future Atalanta only dies, we should put lasers on it. Lasers, <laughs> lasers. Though I have to say, I prefer the red ones to the green ones, but really? beggars can't be choosers. I do. <laughs> no, they don't work as far out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as far as these go, they look like they're making one point. <laughs> okay. Exploration is all about the break? debates. There's uh, so much to learn when we uh, descend into the deep sea and um, so the games are all messed up. Mm -hmm. can be tempting to pretend to know definitively, but we're, uh, <laughs> we're uh, often better off remaining open, remaining Wait curious, <laughs> continuing to look for more evidence. So I know we have a good shot of the fair lead and it looks like a couple a pair of bits over there or, or bollards sometimes if they're single or bollards usually on shore but um, something else that, uh, that I don't know why I continually imagine on shipwrecks I, I see paint cans everywhere and I know those are bigger <laughs> but it, it looks like a paint can I'm sorry it's a very big paint can. This is, this is the, our third shipwreck, and it's the third one that Hans has seen paint cans on. <laughs> As if paint cans are going to stay on a deck <laughs> on a sinking ship. <laughs> well, I, I think that was a paint can in the hangar of the... It certainly could have been. Uh, yeah, perhaps it got town. painted on. Yeah, I mean, if it if like paint had spilled or, some, or if it had like melted in a fire, it could have stuck there, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I'll guess I'll those are probably very, very large. Right. Yeah, yeah they, very large. Well, the Might ship, fit needs, one a of me in it. ship needs a lot of paint. They're Daniel Kinzer fitting uh, yeah. paint cans. <laughs> Absolutely. The world needs to be more my size, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, you know, learning happens through association. We're always, uh, and when we're exploring, we're always drawing connections to back home, to what we know, to what's familiar to us. And uh, mm -hmm. that's part of the journey. That's how we make meaning. And it's no different here, exploring these deep sea wrecks. They, they mean different things to all of us, uh, however we connect to them. Uh, Very much so. Yeah. So to my eye, it's looking like these characters probably painted over again, but we may have some other stuff that has grown over them since. Yeah. So we may have a little bit of a harder time with these than we did with the Kagi. Yeah, well, hopefully they've done something that is also fairly common, is outline the shape of the name or characters with a welding bead. Mm -hmm. And that can give us some shadow, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Did I, can, I, I think I missed it the other day. Why, 
were they painted over and when? Mm -hmm. did, can, did anyone catch that? From my memory, it, uh, it was shared from Shoreside that they they would have been painted over at the start of the the start of the mission okay. in order in order to conceal the ship's uh, identity. Okay, um, that makes sense. Across, yeah. That makes sense. Not yeah, I could help certainly. Yeah. Love that. Well, these not like these weren't recognizable ships. <laughs> right. They did have uh, well, at least the Akagi, that beautiful image with the uh, with the. Rising sun uh, with the beautiful Japanese flag painted onto the deck kind of stands out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, about like six minutes ago, I got us to try and move five meters off. I don't, I mean, it doesn't look like we've made too much progress. Yeah. Oh, only six minutes, though. Yeah. Yeah, let, let's just um, let's just sit here for a few more minutes. Okay. Um, get getting a good shot of the name is decently important. Um, I don't want to waste. I don't want to spend like an hour here, but let let's just settle out a bit more. I also don't want to move too far back so in case we don't get back. But uh, sure, sure. let's just see if we settle out and okay. get get a chance to to drop down. Okay. You know, another interesting uh, difference between Akagi, at least from what we see, is if anybody remembers from yesterday's dive, there were those troughs um, that had scupper holes in it on both port and starboard. Uh, a difference between the two that I don't think we see here, at least not yet, but this is the right area for them. Huh. Interesting. I do, I do, it, it sort of looks just to the right of the cleat like um, something that might resemble the hiragana for one of the hiragana for ka. I could be imagining things, but uh, and I don't know where it was uh, in the plans where it was supposed to be positioned. But that I might have. Yeah, but on average, how long has it has it been taking for uh, our movements to translate down the line? Um. 10 to 12 minutes about okay. yeah it it's kind of yeah it's weird because there were some spots where we just weren't getting any response but right um about yeah 10 to 12 minutes okay cool thank you oh you know what we may only have well they were right they're actually uh, on this on these plans they the two letters were aft of this cleat so I might just be—it might just be a discoloration there, and mm. we're missing the two, uh, the two characters. I if see. this is correct. Yeah, I thought they were pretty. Oh wait, hold on. Pretty so, far out. Hold on, I might be wrong. Th again, I'm just looking at like this 3D book, which may not be 100% right. Oh, yeah, no, that is right. Um, looks like the break might have been right at one of the characters. Yeah, well, I mean, there's always the issue of it. the drawing is the drawing and the real thing on the bottom sure, is yeah, the real course. thing. Yeah, of course. Right. It also looked like there was an anchor hung right uh, forward of this cleat, but I don't see that either. Yeah, I think that white patch might just be a discoloration. I'm not sure that's... It looks too small and doesn't go down below that line. It also looks like they're spaced further apart than the characters on the Akagi. I don't know if that's relevant, though. Yeah, but it is only two characters, not three, so they might right. have spaced it out more. But um, Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, I'm not sure that we have writing here. I'm not sure. So you, you just let me know if you want to still hang out for a minute or try to move. Yeah, I think, I don't, I don't think this is writing. I think we're, I think that's damaged. Uh, we can, um, okay. we, yeah, we can call in a move to uh, 
try to um, lateral along the, okay. the side of the wreck. Thank so you guys. Good. Yeah. Amazing, amazing job bringing us uh, super close, Robert yeah. and Zach. Thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Jose, are we on Directly wide zoom? <laughs> we almost kissed the kissed the Kaga there. Yeah, science chat is in general agreement that this uh, probably is not writing. So maybe just a heading kind of due north with us. Uh, or a little off. off yeah. It may all be in the angle that we're okay. looking at. Because maybe we are like at the same area. Oh one five? Let's see. This is where we want to be in the here. Sorry, Jim, can you repeat that? Like we're just saying that we're we're a little bit too over the wreck and we need to back off like another five meters or so. Like this is the optimal camera angle, right? Right, right. Lightwise. So we need to have the corner the edge of the deck in view from this angle. Sure. Yeah. Um Yeah, we're just we're trying to we're trying to get a heading here for moving. So, so if we just move we need it. To go straight back. All right, we want to go straight back. So what is that? That's one two zero ish. One two zero. Okay. Yeah. 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 One of our uh, one of our viewers online trying to settle the capstan hot tub debate <laughs> uh, says it's uh, actually one of the supports for the boat deck, uh, the base of one of the supports for the boat deck, and uh, yeah. hmm. suggesting that the name is quite a bit further back on the stern, which is obviously missing as we just saw. Yeah, agreed. We're going to try and just back off a little bit and then see if we can get a good good angle looking down and then we can try and lateral up. That's what Robert wants to do. Sounds good. Hot tub, capstan, support for the boat deck. Either way, uh, we are witnessing a very sacred and somber historical site. Shipwreck of the Kaga, Battle of Midway took so many lives. So many sailors and servicemen sacrificing their lives for their families, for their communities, for their countries. And it is uh, so humbling and such a privilege to be able to bring this to all of you from the EV Nautilus, thanks to ROV Atlanta and our amazing pilot and navigator, captain and bridge team, incredible archaeology team and science team ashore in Silver Spring, colleagues joining us from Japan as well, um, and from live here in the control van. 
Most definitely. You know, tragedy has no borders, nor does collaboration. And as we've mentioned in the previous archaeological dives and in our other um, deep sea dives on Mauna Kai and sea mounds, that there's many people who are involved with this, the execution of this, our, sh our ship crew on the EV Nautilus, as well as various support ashore, um, many different countries and communities. So this is definitely an effort that you know, we have many individuals, organizations involved in, and we're just so grateful um, that Ocean Exploration Trust uh, they're so progressive in this type of work. It's such a privilege. Absolutely. Not to mention the support from NOAA Ocean Exploration for the, for the ability to do the mission. Absolutely, so much, uh, so much support. NOAA's, NOAA and the, the Ocean Exploration Collaborative Institute and uh, no office of, of ocean exploration, just incredible collaborators. The marine sanctuary, no marine sanctuary is just incredible collaborators and supports, gifting us with their knowledge throughout and, and the capacity for conducting this work. And I'm so thankful to, so, so thankful to have their collaboration as well. All part of this legacy of, of uh, peace and and cooperation and, and uh, curiosity and exploration together moving forward into the future, voyaging into the future. And uh, we hope that um, these experiences remind us all that, that that is possible and that's the direction we can move in together. Right. Emphasizing in a comprehensive fashion the understanding of the natural resources, historic sites like this, and, and the cultural resources and values of these special places. Absolutely, Hans. That looks like sediment overlaying the wooden deck. And you know, one thing we we don't really do in this particular non-invasive survey or with this tool, the Atalanta, is have the ability to measure the depth of sediment. But um, as with, you know, deep sea corals and sponges, when you have something like a shipwreck, you have a dated fixed platform to be able to see, you know, how fast things progress on the bottom, like sediment accumulation or growth of corals, et cetera. Um, so that is of interest. And I hope that in subsequent analysis of this footage and the survey, uh, which will of course, you know, happen in the, in the future while we do the real time, you know, kind of preliminary analysis here that uh, estimate of the depth of sediment, at least visually in some places, is included. Uh, I, I wouldn't rely a whole lot on the sediments in this case because a lot of that is probably what settled out of the water column after impact, but certainly um, the biological growth on some of the substrate uh, will uh, do exactly what you're saying. That's exactly what I was thinking, Val, is it's <laughs> not gonna be the, the thing to do visually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is a. Uh, it is interesting though. This, um, you know, as a back to a viewer's comment, some of the work I'm able to do with uh, some young Hawaiians on shore in Hawaii, starting to leverage machine learning and artificial intelligence to be able to explore this data. Of course, our mapping and our sonar data as well, but also this video data. Um, and as we gather more information on these shipwrecks, um, not just these, but shipwrecks from around the world, and we have increasing amounts of. Video data, of course, is very expensive and hard to get. But if we can do m more comprehensive analysis um, on these on these kinds of uh, videos and images, uh, I think we'll be surprised by how much it, they're they're able to help us figure out um, some of these models that are sort of difficult to decipher. Uh, For those tuning in, we're, we're just off the starboard stern of IJN Kaga, Japanese aircraft carrier, sunk in the Battle of Midway in June 1942. Uh, 5,400 meters deep.
Yeah, I think we're beginning to move back now a little bit. Looks like it. Yeah, these are very slow, deliberate movements that we're doing. Since this is a non-invasive video only survey around the wreck, we're moving uh, slowly and carefully and giving uh, the ship's movements time to catch, uh, uh, time to translate down the cable and over to the tow sled. So um, uh, Catalina, our navigator, has uh, told us on average that means it's about a 10 to 12 minute lag across uh, this distance between right. ship and ROV. Right. And we're operating in a single vehicle configuration uh, with the tow sled at Atlanta. So, um, you're seeing some of the uh, motion at the surface also being translated down. So we're going up and down in response to uh, the wave action that we can feel topside. Yeah, I felt those waves right now that about 10 minutes ago. It's about right. I think Catalina got that one right. Right, yeah, it was that larger <laughs> set that rolled through. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank our science chat ashore colleague of mine, Mashkor. He suggests that the the, the piece, the projection on deck just to the right of the fair lead is one of the bases of the supports for the flight deck. That would have been several stories above where we are now. So that could be. Thank you, Mashkor. Yeah, so we have seen how all three of these wrecks have become uh, uh, artificial habitats for different kinds of marine life at this depth. And what we're seeing in common with all three is that uh, uh, anemones are very common on certain uh, metals in all of these wrecks. And they, they seem to favor certain materials over others. Uh, we've also seen a few uh, deep sea fish. We're not entirely sure what they are. Uh, we see a lot of uh, uh, holothurians, which are uh, a type casually uh, referred to as a headless chicken monster. And <laughs> on Yorktown, we saw what appeared to be uh, a small population of some stocked sponges, but I don't think we've seen them on either the Akagi or the Kaga at this point. Mm -hmm. No mermaids yet. Quite surprising, nope. really. I did get some more from Sebastian on some of the sponge IDs. Some, a few of them were bolosomas. Um, bolosomas. bolosomas? Yeah. I'm not oh. sure. If they're, they're usually stocked. Bolosomas. Right. Yeah. 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 Mahalo Kukui and Sebastian. Yeah, these are pretty small bolosomas. Um, on some of the uh, sea mounts that uh, we'll be diving on, we sometimes see uh, uh, quite large bolosoma species. We saw some very memorable ones uh, last year in this area, but. Um, not as many uh, this time around. So once we resume the uh, biology and geology uh, portion of this expedition, we'll be on the lookout for some more of those. Stock sponges can be uh, quite spectacular to look at, and it's interesting that we're seeing them uh, this deep, uh, at least on the Yorktown. My apologies, it uh, was Mashcore's email sign-in, but it's it's my friend Jim Delgado using Mashcore's email sign-in, so. Ah, okay. A bit hard to tell from this end, but thanks, Jim. Does it look like some of the portholes are still intact? It does, A absolutely. little above the bloodline. Yep. They're very big on portholes, eh? These ships have had a lot of portholes. Kaga is our third and uh, most extensively damaged shipwreck um, that we've explored on this Ala Moana Kauli expedition. We started off with the USS Yorktown a few days ago and moved over to give the first eyes on, the first ever video and camera footage of IJ Anakagi yesterday uh, before making the transit um, over here to Kaga and uh, and bringing this third mm -hmm. this third shipwreck to life, honoring 
honoring the sailors and their families and also the legacy of, of now um, peace and cooperation that we've been talking about. And uh, we're glad you're here with us. Glad to have the uh, entire team uh, tuning into the control van. Uh, it means a lot to us here on board uh, to have the support of such a global community while conducting these historic surveys. And we appreciate all of the stories that have been shared with us as well mm -hmm. through uh, the public and the science chat. Nautilus Shoreside. Yes. Go ahead, Shoreside. So we've seen some messages come in. We've all been checking it, and this very clear view shows us exactly where we are. Tony, uh, John Parshall thought we were directly over the space where the uh, steering gear and the rudder would be. <coughs> and we are. We are well back from the tip of the stern while it starts to taper here. The fair lead that you see there is right next to those portholes. And so the support that we see that's mangled off to the side, as another person had indicated writing in, is actually one of the supports for the elevated boat deck that lay at this level and covered this portion of the stern, as opposed to the larger supports that supported the flight deck. So we are not going to see the name here. It was further back where it's now gone. The tip of that stern may be somewhere else and deposited in the debris field, but we're looking into this, this empty void is we are still, we've got at least, you know, several meters, potentially more of hull that has been detached that was the tip of the stern. Oh, Mahalo Silver Spring for that clarification and, and uh bringing us to a, a better and clearer understanding of, of where we're at, what we're looking at right now as we um, we still sit just off the starboard stern, but uh, several meters at least of, of that uh, tip of that stern uh, ripped off uh, the vessel um, while sinking or when it hit the when it hit the bottom or perhaps at the very end of its of battle. But uh, uh, do we know, uh, Silver Spring, where those torpedoes hit that, that, uh, that scuttled is there any narrative about that? I mean, it's probably affected a bit by this. Oh, well, so the one thing I discovered here is the gains on the, on the auto heading were way off. So I can tweak those. We're looking into that. Well, we are, which you can also see just off onto the right hand side, moving out of view right now, is the socket for another one of those supports, most probably for that boat deck. For the boat deck, that's right, thank you. We have, uh, we have many fans, Jim, uh, lots of people in chat just excited that uh, you agree with them. They feel, uh, they feel <laughs> validated and, and wanna, wanna, uh, wanna acknowledge you for, you and the whole team there. Um, John, everybody else, Russ, for sharing, uh, sharing all your knowledge with us while we're looking at this wreck. Well, thank yeah, we you. Really and to it. all of you that are out there listening to us right now, please understand that we recognize that many of you know these stories and know these ships better than we do. Many of you have been spending a fair portion of your lives studying this. And whether you've published a book or it's been online or you've gone back and forth and discussed this with one another, we really appreciate what you're bringing to this to the power of telepresence, which is the opportunity to interact with you. And you are actually, you're, you're part of the team as you're doing this work with us. Because there's no way we know all of this. We know what we know. And frankly, there's a lot we don't know. And so with that, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, we, of course, are always going back and checking. We're looking at plans, things of that sort. But we wouldn't be, and we couldn't be doing this without you. So well said, Jim, and uh, thank you. Um, and and it, Robert, I, do you want me to continue this, this Zoom size, or would you like me to come back out? I think we're good for this. We've, this is, we've got a very good, clear sense now of exactly what we're 
looking at it. Okay. Sir. Copy. Thank you. We can move on. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Amber. And absolutely thank you to all the explorers tuning in with us. So this is just a quick update. We, we've we been a little quiet for a minute because we're, we're a little, we've lost our bearing a little bit. We can't tell if the Atalanta heading sensor is like off. Um, so we do apologize for the delay. We're kind of trying to sort this out to see, because we're, we're trying to get a bearing to go up the side of the ship, but Something's kind of weird right now. All right, thanks for the update, Nav. We'll stand by. Atalanta may be a little tired. Uh, maybe the only one outworking uh, Mike uh, <laughs> and Hans on this uh, this journey through these three shipwrecks. Uh, Catalina, when you have a sec. Yeah, go ahead. So I'd written down uh, earlier in the dive that it was 110 degrees from where we landed to the stern. So if you yeah. flip that 180. That's what we're thinking That too. should be about right. And we can see how that does. Okay. I mean, yeah, we're thinking the same thing. Um, yeah, it just seems like Atalanta's bearings off. Well, sometimes when we you're could. near something that's huge and metallic, compasses don't work very well. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Oh yeah, that yeah. could very well be it. Okay, I think, yeah, we should. I think it would be safe to call that move then, kind of in that opposite bearing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we could always come off bottom if necessary too, right? Like, yes. yeah, we yeah. could always pull up. Uh, it'll, the, cut, the gyro will re, uh, recalibrate yeah, itself, and we can come back down. Yeah, bridge now. Could we please move one zero meters at bearing three zero five? Yeah, because I noticed. This is our newer compass <laughs> okay. module that we got. Yep. Thank you. So it's the overhaul okay. of uh, Argus and Atalanta. And uh, we used to have a flux compass that was inside the Argus bottle. And when we tried to put this compass inside the Argus bottle, it didn't work. <laughs> huh. It's because the, the Argus bottle's stainless, but it's actually a uh, like a 306 stainless that's slightly magnetic. And it, the compass didn't work in there. That'll do it. So that, but the housing on Atalanta is not that stainless. So so it, it's, it is inside the housing, the main housing on Atalanta, and it, it does work. But it is a big steel wreck, so yeah. it's going to yeah. throw off any kind of magnetic compass somewhat. But I wouldn't imagine, like, huge, you know, it's not going to be 90 degrees off or something. Yeah, because I noticed we'd started, our heading had started to swing back and forth a little bit uh, about 10 well, or 15 Well, I did notice ago. as I was poking around here that the gains on the auto heading were not set correctly. Okay. So, so you see it's not doing the wild gyrations mm -hmm. like it was. Mm -hmm. Right. So. It seemed like that last one did pull us off. Yeah, now we are. So are we going to yeah. be operating that manually? Is that possible? What, what's yeah. that? Auto heading? heading. <coughs> uh, no, I corrected the gains, so it's, ah, okay. it looks okay. stable to me now. Like Excellent. Not, it's not doing the wild gyrations. So. It had too much proportional gain and not enough uh, derivative gain in the, mm. in the PID loop. We have a uh, comment from a from an online viewer answering one of our earlier questions. Uh, okay. says, partial shattered sword documents that the two torpedo hits should be on the starboard side, slightly aft of a midships. And uh, we also see that we have some anti, looks like anti-fouling paint, uh, slightly visible. Perhaps could be other sediment or other things too, but um, just above the mud line here, the sediment line. So we've fallen off quite a bit now. Can we zoom down all the way? Yes, we are. Yeah. Go ahead.
Well, we've looked that way. We've been looking that way. We have this bit that juts out right here. But I think we're clear of it now. Yeah. For those joining, we are um, still working on positioning ourselves for conducting a survey of the starboard side from stern to bow on IGN Kaga, whose flight deck and hangar decks were, um, were blown off or ripped away almost entirely during the Battle of Midway and sinking to its final resting place here at 5,400 meters in Papahanaumokuakea, north of Kuai'ileni, or Midway Atoll. And uh, seeing that as that flight deck came off, it looks like also uh, a significant portion of the stern, tip of the stern, was ripped away from the hull as well. And thank you for tuning in and joining us on this exploration, uh, the first uh, comprehensive survey of this kind. On, um, on this important and historical shipwreck. It is pretty buried there. We did just call in another move three minutes ago or so. We're just trying to inch our way that way. Uh, at 110? Uh, wait, what's that? Was that at 110? The opposite, so like 305. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Same difference. Good call. <laughs> Don't go at 110. <laughs> also, um, I think we got enough 110 in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's our standard oh. <laughs> standard procedure. <laughs> so the face changes sometimes, depending on the mood. <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> I appreciate the optimism despite these frustrations. <laughs> hey, you guys are doing great work. Hey, being at, where are we, 5,430 5, meters? Uh, yeah, it, it, things are slow. It's just, uh, just being here on the wreck is, is amazing in and of itself. It is. Yeah. So this is pretty well buried right here. You know? Yeah. We're only, yeah. We're like eight meters up off the bottom. There's a big mound of dirt. Yep. If we get much lower, we start kicking up dirt, dust. And once we kick things up, we're trying to avoid that because otherwise the uh, image becomes, the imagery we get is too turbid uh, to work with. So trying to keep those sediments uh, where they are. These kinds of pelagic sediments are very, very fine grained, very easily disturbed by the thrusters. Well, you get a surge as the, as Atalanta's going up and down in the water column. Yeah. You know, pushes right. quite a bit of water down below you. Mm-hmm. Mike, on the port side, or Hans, was it true that the, the bow, the bow was pretty well buried into the, into the sediment? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. It's it's not. It, it seems to be on an even keel, just equally buried. Yeah. Um, but as someone wrote in, um, amidships is on this side. The starboard side is where the torpedoes hit. So we'll see if mm -hmm. uh, it's too buried to see any of that damage. But we'll give it a shot. Zach, you want to write down those gain numbers? So we got uh, 600 for the proportional. Yeah, there you go. We have a bit of a fun fact coming in from one of so our it's viewers. Just the heading numbers. All the rest are just zeroed out. So one of our viewers and. Uh, fellow explorers and historians says the Japanese didn't officially use ship prefixes during the war. So terms like IJN, Kago. I just, so just write the proportional gain on the heading is 600 and the derivative gain is 800. Those were invented by post-war authors for continuity with uh, the allied ship prefixes and similar things were done with German vessels as well uh, when the Germans and Japanese and then, uh, neither, neither used see. them. The uh, heading speed is 10 degrees per second. Kaga and Akagi, Yorktown, and several other vessels, so aircraft, went down at the Battle of Midway over 81 years ago. Almost exactly six months after uh, an attack on Pearl Harbor ignited a war in the Pacific. And, um, we're honoring that story and that sacrifice and also the legacy of hope and peace that came after that war. Viewers, uh, viewers who are looking at Petrol's uh, side scan sonar map are, are curious if, um, if perhaps the the missing piece of the stern is uh, is still attached to the to the after hangar and flight deck, um, that uh, that they think could potentially be nearby. <laughs> 